welcome to Gatorback Cycle Park, just outside Gainesville, Florida, and site of round number one of the AMA 125 National Motocross Series. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Vikas, and joining us, making his ESPN debut, that's right, it's Damon Bradshaw. This rider has won 19 Supercross events, 10 Outdoor Nationals, but we haven't seen you at the racetrack. Welcome back. Thanks, Sean. It's good to be back again. Uh, I think everyone has been wondering, you know, if I was going to have anything to do with the sport again. And, you know, here I am. And uh, I've also been riding, doing a little bit of testing. I'm thinking about racing again. Good to see you back on a motorcycle, but even better to have him with us here in the booth. Now, Damon Huffman has been dominant in 125 Supercross, but now we're on the Outdoor National Series. How much different is that, and how do you think he'll do? Well, it's definitely different, but uh, he's coming in with a lot of confidence, and that's going to help him. Uh, only, you know, the difference is 125 outdoors are going to last a little longer. they got two motos, and uh, it's going to obviously be warmer in Gainesville, I think. But uh, I think he's going to definitely be a factor. We've had other changes in the 125 Nationals. Some riders have gone up to 250. Jeff Emig on a Yamaha, Ezra Lusk on a Suzuki, and last year's champion, Doug Henry on a Honda. A couple guys have gone the other way. Brian Swink, Michael Craig from Honda of Troy have gone from the 250 to the 125. How much different is that? Well, the bikes are definitely different. Um, in my opinion, I think it takes a little more effort to ride the 125, so those guys are going to kind of have to adapt to that and put some time on the 125. Well, another guy putting time on a 125 is Steve Lampson. He rides 250 in Supercross. Maybe he'll be the favorite being second in the points from last year. Let's take a look at the racetrack. Well, Jan, over the years, this track has gotten harder and harder, and uh, there's right here on the top left-hand part of the screen, there's a big long straightaway and then a drop-off into that uh, real slick a uh, fast sweeper over there. And then we also have the uh, elevator shaft come out of a left-hand sweeper and then try to jump up the hill there. And over the finish line, there's a big double kind of going back down into the gator pit for the right-hand turn before the finish line. After the finish line, of course, we have a sweeper where you can take many lines. There's big elevation changes, but you can tell by this shot there could be changing weather. We'll be back for moto number one. This edition of Power Wheels on ESPN2 is brought to you by Honda, defending champions and holders of the past seven consecutive Supercross titles. Honda, come ride with us. What do you see in this blood? Hmm? Interesting. And this one? I see. And? <laughs> And finally, hmm? oops, <laughs> my mistake. Suzuki Dual Sport Motorcycles. Four personalities, one great line. Oh, I see. Let's take a look now at the Suzuki flashback. Here at the Gatorback Cycle Park, the year is 1984. Number one, Johnny O'Mara gets buried in the field in the first turn. The man with the hole shot was number four, Jeff Ward, who's now gone on to an auto racing career and a promising one at that. He's doing very well in the Indy Light Series. There's Johnny O'Mara, fifth place at the moment, but he would close that gap down to second place, but not close enough to pass and take the victory from Jeff Ward who went on to win one of his 11 national victories. You're taking a look at Steve Lamson, second in the points last year. Mike Goslar, his mechanic, looking on, getting ready, preparing the dirt for that all-important start, Damon. Yeah, you can see some guys there are raking some dirt in hole, and then, uh, there's Kevin's raking it out to get down to some hard ground. Kevin Windham, the young superstar from the Yamaha team, his mechanic, Ali Seymour, and there's Bob Hanna looking on as well from the Yamaha camp. Brian Swink. Yeah, it looks like Brian there just keeps his hair uh, short for the for the hot summer there in Gainesville. Well, I guess his hair has even been shorter than that. And his mechanic, Marshall Plum, looking on. Another guy to look out for would be Ryan Hughes. And his mechanic, Chad Watts, getting ready for the start here of moto number one. 119 riders tried to make this field. This is a starting grid. Huffman, Wyndham, Pichon, Decker. And then, of course, as we go through the pages, we see some other fast guys. Pingree, Gonzalez, Brown, Pedersen. Yezik, Cooper, Antonez, Carson, Sheik will show you the top 20, but there'll be 40 starting this one. Of course, we're looking for the all-important hole shot here. First moto of the year, moto number one as they come into the big sweeper. As we look back to the field, a couple riders tangle. We see that's 31. Buddy Antonez looks like Gonzalez, number 32. Another rider involved. Right now, it looks like Damon, they're okay, but a couple guys trying to get their breath. 
but when you got 40 guys coming in this first turn, it gets tight and it gets tight quick. Well, it certainly does get tight quick, but look how quick this man is. Damon Huffman got the whole shot, not just in Supercross. He's done it here in outdoors. We saw Lampson and Hughes also with great starts. There's Huffman. Hughes, Hughes is making a move on Lampson for second. Yeah, these guys are trying to, I think, get into sync and get away from the slower guys there so they can uh, start racing for this next 30 minutes. Well, these three guys were certainly some of the favorites, and they all got good starts today. Right there, number 12, that's Damon Huffman on a Suzuki, followed by Lampson on a Honda, and then Hughes on a Kawasaki. Very hard here, isn't it? Yeah, that's a real fast straightaway that we're talking about in the beginning, and uh, it gets real slick, but there's a lot of passing going on here. When it's hard packed like that, you can't really carry the speed to the sweeper you want to, can you? Yeah, you just kind of got to slide the bike and, uh, and hope you don't hit any holes that uh, you weren't expecting. A little bit like flat track racing. Then they come to this portion of the track. Looks a little bit rutted, David. Yeah, this track is getting pretty worn, it looks like, as the weekend goes on, I think, between the amateur guys and then these guys running practice and uh, the qualifiers. The track's starting to get pretty beat. Now, this is a long moto. How hard are these guys pushing? Obviously, they got the kind of starts that they wanted. Right now, it looks like they're going all out. Yeah, it looks like right now they uh, think they're racing for five laps. But usually, the 125 class starts off really fast like that. But uh, I think once they get into sync here, the race will, you know, they'll get a pace, and that'll kind of what they'll stick to for a little while. Now, Damon Huffman has started off fast in Supercross and then continued fast right through the moto. There's Mike Brown starting to close the gap, moving up there also. Do you think he can do that here for the long distance of outdoors? Yeah, well, I think he also needs to be thinking about that you know it's like we said in the beginning you know they're going from supercross to the outdoor but uh you know if it was me and i'm at the first race i try to pace myself and uh wait and kind of wait and let the race come to me now here's a big double here really have to fly to make this one some of the 250s really crank off of that one a little sandier in this part of the track yeah i think this is kind of like sill just over the years this dirt has kind of went to nothing and we have this real rough straightaway right up before the finish line that was a great angle we saw ryan hughes he's using a little bit of a little english there on the bike as it gets in the air we see kevin windham just past brown right there for position yeah these guys are coming back around right before a real steep left hand drop off that uh, we haven't really had a chance to talk about but it over the years it's gotten actually smaller than what it used to be it looks like steve lampson is starting to make a run here on damon huffman they're side by side as they approach this jump they fly in the air together let's see who lands in the lead it looks like lampson has taken over the lead of moto number one John, it looks like you got a better drive out of that bottom. I actually think you had a different line, and uh, that's a good place to pass out of that bottom because you can go in and inside and outside so many different times. We got a look of Jeff Stanton there, former Supercross champion, now a consultant for Honda, cheering on Steve Lamson. Let's take a look at the replay, Damon. Looks like Lamby went to the outside down there and just got a little bit better drive than Huffman did come up through there. And, uh, looks like oh, they're getting a little bit close there. But they're going to go over this jump next uh, corners to the right. Almost looks like uh, Huffman would have the advantage. Huffman had the inside, but it looked like he just let Lampson go through. Right now, Huffman seems content to follow Lampson in second. Well, I think maybe he noticed Lampson was getting pretty close to him, so maybe he's going to just try to run his lines for a little bit and uh, see if it helps him out. Well, these two guys have not raced together this year, and we're coming... Uh -oh. oh, Brian Hughes almost... He keeps it going. He only lost a couple of seconds. Man, he was doing a Superman there. He was flying off the back of the bike. It looks like he's been practicing that. That was pretty good. Well, we know that Jeremy McGrath kind of does that as a trick, but look at this, David. Looks like Hughes sat down a little bit too early up on the seat. You can see uh, Huffman was still up off the seat, and I think that's uh, part of the reason they about went over the bar. But that was a miracle. He was able to hang on to that bike. We mentioned McGrath actually does that as a trick. He's done it in Europe in a Supercross off of a triple, calls it the Superman. These two guys, Hughes and McGrath, ride together, but he didn't plan for that one, did he? No, I don't think so. Uh, hopefully it didn't hurt himself so he can get himself back together and be in there for the end of this moto. Well, one guy who's not having problems is right there, Steve Lampson on the high approaching the finish line jump looks like he's pulling away Damon yeah it looks like he is getting away a little bit but Huffman may be just dropping back to stay out of the uh, roost but it looks like these other guys are right there well we'll be back to see what happens in a moment grab a seat Welcome back to Gatorback Cycle Park. I'm Jan Bikas along with Damon Bradshaw and Art Ekman in the pits. As we see, the battle is closing down. There's Mike Brown starting to close in on Ryan Hughes, and there's Kevin Windham. He looks strong. 
Yeah, these guys hadn't even really separated yet. They're still, uh, looks like there's 10 or 15 guys right in there. Well, Kevin Windham certainly has a nice, smooth style, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Um, I think Kevin's just kind of, like you said, it's the first race of the year, and he's waiting to see where things are going to map out, and uh, hopefully he'll put in a charge. Do you think he has the endurance? Oh, wow, it looks like number 22, Robbie Rayner, just put a move on him big time. Yeah, I don't know if Kevin's going to, you know, if he has quite the endurance. I think uh, in the Supercross, I think he's still been struggling a little bit, but he's definitely got the speed and the talent. Well, we wondered about Robbie Rayner because he was injured in Orlando in a Supercross. He says he's only 75% fit, but, boy, he looks fit there. Yeah, 75% on Gainesville would, uh, would kind of worry me. Well, we're looking at Mike Brown right now putting in a very strong performance. He's fourth place in the Supercross 125 West Series, his best finish of fifth. He looks better here in the outdoors. Yeah, he's doing real good. Hopefully, uh, Mike can last uh, these two motos. These two finishes would probably help his confidence a lot. Well, certainly some of these guys really love the outdoors because it is a different discipline. How much different do you have to pace yourself here outdoors as opposed to Supercross? Well, it'd be nice if you could just run two 35-minute motos wide open, but I don't think there's a, you know, there's a lot of guys that might tell you they can, but for me and for some of the other guys, it seemed like we'd pace ourselves and just try to work through the race and, uh, and, and be there at the end, because at the end, a lot of the other guys are starting to die down. Another guy we're taking a look at there is number 22, Robbie Raynard. He's ridden here a lot in the past, and earlier, Art Ekman asked him if that helped him. Yeah, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier. It gives you a little more confidence in the track and yourself. And I, I, I know I can ride this track, and I'm not looking for other things. And it's just the confidence, I think, is the biggest thing. And I feel pretty comfortable on this track. It's high speed, and I liked it a little bit better when it was sandier, but I'll still ride it. <laughs> Robbie Raynard is one of those riders that has experience, but right there, Mikel Pichon is new this year to these tracks. How tough is that, Damon? Well, it's pretty tough. Hopefully the Pro Circuit guys have uh, got the video camera out there and video and some guys like Raynard and, uh, so he can check out some of those lines that he can't see. Now, but Pete Schoen has been doing very well in Supercross, but this must be similar to what he's used to riding in Europe. Yeah, I think it is similar in a lot of ways, but uh, again, you know, he's at a different racetrack, a different atmosphere, so he's kind of got to get used to everything. Pichon is 19 years old. He comes from France, and a lot of people think he's going to be a star of the future. What kind of style does he have? Is he another one of these guys that's real smooth on the bike? Looks like here today he's riding really smooth. He seems uh, to be not making any mistakes whatsoever, and uh, he looks to be real smooth like Bale. Well, Jean-Michel Bale, certainly a rider who made a name for himself coming across from Europe with 12 outdoor national victories. I would have to say a lot of people are saying this young Frenchman may be the Jean-Michel Bale of the future. But he's got quite a ways to catch up to this man, Steve Lampson, our leader, taking it just a little easy on that hard part of the track. Yeah, he's just trying to stay real smooth and keep a good steady pace out in front of these guys. Well, it gets really hard and slick there. Speak oh, look, Ryan Hughes has made a move on Damon Huffman for second place. There's no love lost between these two. I bet they don't send Christmas cards, Damon. Yeah, I'm sure they don't do that. These guys here are racing, and uh, like we said, I think this moto is still young, and they're all kind of still filling each other out, but it looks like they're going, uh, they're going pretty fast. Well, a few years back, these two have spent some time banging handlebars and have had strong words for each other, but they've mended their ways. They're not best of friends, but they don't like when the other guy beats them. Right there, that's the elevator. The 125s, Damon, are just taking it one, but the 250s sail the whole thing. Yeah, I think so. The 250s got a little more grunt out of that bottom, but uh, these guys here, it's probably, I think it's a little bit faster, but probably not a whole lot. Ryan Hughes there. Seems like he's pulling away from Damon Huffman. He was not able to beat him in Supercross, but he's leading him right now in outdoors. Pichon right now seems as though Robbie Raynard may be closing down on him. Robbie Raynard says he's only 75%. Boy, looks strong to me. Well, there's our leader, Steve Lampson, and Art Ekman down in the pits has caught up to his mechanic, Mike Gosselar. Mike, a fine start, took over the lead early. Now it's a matter of endurance. Yeah, just a matter of relaxing and riding his own pace and not getting worried about what's going on behind him. Still, we got about 25 minutes left, so it's a long ways. So you're, you're going to be cautious on advice in this moment. Huh? Yeah, I'm just basically going to tell him his lap time so you can just concentrate on that instead of concentrating on what's happening behind him. You happy with the lap times? Yeah, they're real good. They're even better than practice, and in practice he was setting, I think, the fastest times. Well, the fastest times will always take you to the front, as it has for Steve Lampson. We take a look at the Suzuki Field Summary. We'll be right back. A decade ago, face off. Rule number 62, interference. 
Rule number 45, board checking. Rule number 25, to play the game, use a puck. The Islanders cross the river to take on the Devils in New Jersey, Wednesday at 7.30. Face it, the NHL rules on ESPN2. Back at the Gatorback Cycle Park, Jan Bikas, Damon Bradshaw, and Art Ekman in the pits. We take a look at the Frenchman, Mikhail Pichon, and Robbie Raynard right now seems as though he's mounting a challenge. We talked earlier, he, by his own admission, is only 75%, but he doesn't look like it here, Damon. No, he definitely does. It looks like he's running a real strong pace. His shoulder must not be giving him any trouble whatsoever. Well, sometimes they'll say they're 75%, so the other guys might back off. And right now, Pichon doesn't look like he's backing off. We'll have to see how his endurance is. Steve Lamson's endurance certainly doesn't seem in question. Yeah, Lamy still looks real strong. He's always been known to be strong. He doesn't even look like he's really charging it hard, but his pace is staying real steady, and that's what uh, puts him there at the end of the race. He's also making that transition real well from the 250 Supercross to the 125 Outdoor. 125 takes a little more effort to ride, but uh, he's making that change well. With his teammate, Doug Henry, going to the 250 class this year, Steve Lamson feels this may be his year. His mechanic, Mike Gosselaar, and he are working very hard, thinking that with the great battles they had last year and a little better luck, they might do it. This was how the season was last year. Teammate Doug Henry and Steve Lamson trading positions back and forth. This was at Southwick. The whole race was like this. If it wasn't for a couple crashes later in the season, it could have been anyone's title. Yeah, I was too close last year. I threw it away a couple times and uh, had a couple bad crashes. So I learned from those and move on. And now I'm going to, um, you know, go out for the win and get a good points lead. Other riders going for points this season, Mike Craig and Brian Swink of Honda of Troy, coming from the 250 down to the 125 class. Damon Huffman has dominated Supercross, and Lampson knows there will be challengers. Yeah, it is. It was last year, too, and uh, a couple guys got out of it last for this year to go to the 250s, Doug and Jeff Emig, but uh, there's a couple more guys in the 125s now, so uh, it's going to be interesting. It'll be good racing, and uh, you know, I'm going to hope for myself to be out in front you know, every time. Lemmy's goal is to be out front, and, and he is out front right now at Gainesville. Well, he is certainly riding the way he had hoped he would in the 125 class. Does it help him to have ridden so far this year in 250 Supercross, or does he have to relearn everything? Well, I would think it would be a disadvantage because all most of the other guys have already been riding the 125 Supercross, but uh, as you can see, it's no disadvantage to him. Now, you said it's actually harder as we're looking back through the field and seeing Pichon, Reynard. Why is it harder to ride? Do you have to just keep the revs up more? Well, I think just it's it's just uh, the bike's down on power, and you have to keep your momentum going a lot and keep the bike on the power band. You can't rely back on the horsepower. So a lot of using the clutch as well to try and keep it up on the power? Yeah, the clutch, your body, everything else, and you hit a lot of holes that you probably wouldn't hit on a 250. Well, right there, we can see Ryan Hughes flying across that double. That's one the 250 guys do. Ooh, we see right there. Lampson getting a little squirrely coming off of there. Yeah, it looks like his back tire just broke loose and he got a little sideways. Well, he may have lost a little time because we have a battle for the lead. Ryan Hughes has closed in. We see his mechanic right there, Chad Watts. Breathe. How important is that? It's real important to breathe. He just doesn't want him to get caught up in the battle and be holding his breath. Well, these guys, sometimes when they get nervous, they do hold their breath. And Art Ekman, once he goes by, is going to try and get a word here with Chad. Chad, you reminded your rider to breathe and to stay strong. It's a matter of strength right now, isn't it? Yeah, these guys, front three guys, are really setting a fat pace, fast pace right now. And uh, it's in order, to, it's very important to breathe and uh, keep your rhythm going. Does he have the endurance? He's got it more than anybody out there, I think. I think Chad's right. Ryan's really strong from uh, what I understand. I think he trains real hard, and uh, that means a lot when you come here to Gainesville on this rough track. Well, he trains hard, he rides hard, but look at Damon Huffman. He's closed the gap. First, we thought that Ryan Hughes was closing in on Lamson, but now the real battle is for second place. But you got to be careful here, Damon. Yeah, that's a real hard-packed uh, left-hand sweeper we've been talking about all day, but uh, those guys seem like they get through there pretty smooth. Any of these guys have flat track experience? I guess that would help you there, huh? That's yeah, very would, similar to their style. It would definitely help there on that on that part of the track, but it also gets bumpy through there, so it's almost kind of hard to slide the bike and you hit potholes here and there. We see Damon Huffman right now, who obviously has his sights set on Ryan Hughes, but Ryan Hughes desperately wants to beat Damon. He hasn't done it all year in Supercross. Now he has a chance to do it in outdoors. The only real difference would be endurance, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's what's going to separate the guys right now. It looks like Huffman's riding really smooth. I don't know if 
if uh, Ryan's just kind of riding the edge right now, but Huffman looks really smooth, and that's going to mean a lot because the smoother you are, the less energy you use. Now, we talk about saving energy. How much energy does it take? I mean, right now, oh, talking about energy, Mike Craig has crashed on that section of the track that we talked about. The very hard pack sweeper looks like the wind got knocked out of him. Yeah, it looks like he's going to sit down there and get a breath there, but that ground around there is so hard, and you're going so fast, and, uh, you know, I don't know really what happened. If he came off the drop-off and got sideways or just slid out. One guy who's not sliding out right now is Ryan Hughes. It looks like he put a little distance on Damon Huffman that lap. Of course, this is seesawing back and forth, the best battle on the circuit. There's our leader on a Honda, Steve Lamson. Now we see Ryan Hughes, and popping into the picture, he was on the right-hand side. Believe me, he's there. That's Damon Huffman. He's closing the gap, trying to go for the inside. Looks like he's trying to make a move. And there's an inspiration for you. Tony Berluti says, go for him. Get Hughes now, and then go to the front. Art, what's he have to say? Tony, great start for your rider, and he's hanging in there well. Yeah, he's riding pretty well. He, the Suzuki got an excellent start. They're running really good. He's pretty happy. You think he can catch Hughes? Uh, I think he might be able to get Hughes, but then we got to work on Lampson. But uh, I think he will before the race is over. Lamp times are quick. Yeah, they're picking up. Uh, they're all running about the same lap times as they were at the beginning, so they're all running pretty strong. Did he have much time to test in the outdoors? Uh, yeah, we did a lot of tests, and Roger DeCoster has been working really hard, and uh, we all, all of our team has been working really hard, and we're trying really hard. Tony mentioned Roger DeCoster, Damon. How important is an ex-rider and team manager to these riders? Well, it's real important. You know, the team manager can sit back and watch and see different lines on the track and give those guys information that a lot of times as a rider you can't see. It looked like Damon Huffman had a nice drive, and then he had to kind of back off, got a little bit offline. That's the section of the track that seems to be a bit rutted. This is the best battle on the track right now. This is a battle we've seen many times in all different types of venues, Supercross, outdoors. These guys desperately want to beat each other. You see Huffman tried a different line there to set up on the inside. Well, maybe he has a chance. He goes for the inside, and oh, is he going to hold on? Yes. Damon Huffman goes through for second place now we'll find out if he can draw away from ryan hughes if he was saving anything for the end boy he goes to work right away and pulls out about a two bike length gap huffman kind of set him up in the turn before you could see he kind of went outside inside and then he has advantage right here being on the inside in the right hand corner taking the inside is the key taking the line away from the other rider certainly worked well there for damon huffman who now according to his mechanic tony berluti has his sights set on lampson Damon has followed his mechanics instructions to the T. We'll have to see if he can close that gap on our leader, Steve Lampson. Now we give you a chance to spot your favorite rider on our Suzuki field summary. And we'll be back for the conclusion of Moto One after this. Wouldn't or could have. Good, good. Might have, but didn't. Can't, but should. Someday I may. Love to, but haven't. I would if you would. I wish that I did. Truth is, you can if you want to. And you will if you do. This edition of Power Wheels on ESPN2 is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. Welcome back to Gatorback Cycle Park. Jan Bikas, Damon Bradshaw, and Art Ekman in the pits. And we see, Damon, that Ryan Hughes may be fading somewhat. Robbie Raynard's closing in. Yeah, it looks like Raynard is catching Hughes. Uh, remember, Raynard's only 75% here, but uh, he's catching Hughes. Well, at 75%, he's certainly riding hard. Hughes goes to the outside, then changes his mind, decides to go for the inside line. Is that the quicker way? Yeah, it looks like Raynard's trying to set Hughes up for a pass. Well, they come up here. Let's see if he goes for a pass. He goes to the outside. He's trying to run the outside. This will put him on the inside for the next corner. And yes, Robbie Raynard goes through and takes position from Ryan Hughes. Looks like Ryan's tiring, like we said earlier. Yeah, it looks like he's starting to get a little bit sloppy. He's starting to get toward the end of this moto, and uh, maybe he's just wanting to survive. Here we go. It's leap, kind of leading up to this pass here. This outside line does look a little better. The rut's not near as deep, and it's actually a lot smoother. It sets you up for the right-hand corner on the inside. That was a good pass. Robbie Raynard is hoping to rebound after crashing in Orlando and hurting himself, and Art Ekman has a chance to find out about that from his father. Robert, from his amateur days, we knew he loves this track, but this is a phenomenal performance considering he hasn't had that much practice after the injury. Uh, I'm, I can't believe he's doing this good. I was hoping for a top 10, but man, I don't know. 
Uh, I gotta go. Good luck. Thank you. There's one nervous and excited father cheering for Robbie Raynard, but this man in second place, Damon Huffman, doesn't look like he has the time to close it down on our leader, Steve Lampson, because Steve Lampson right there takes the white flag, signifying the last lap. What does he have to do on this final lap, Damon? Well, basically keep it on two wheels and keep his head on straight and uh, just concentrate on making this lap really smooth. Now, sometimes can you not get into trouble if you try and slow down? Don't you have to keep the pace up? Well, basically you just want to keep it on two wheels, not necessarily slow down, but try to keep that same pace because uh, you're right you can't start making mistakes we have heard stories of riders who try to back off and just make sure they get across the finish and they lose that concentration but right now Lampson is hoping he loses no concentration and this man Robbie Raynard certainly looks like he's well healed from injury yeah Robbie's getting a real good solid ride this first moto we'll see what he's got left in the second moto. third place he's got to be happy well, a guy who's very happy is our leader, Steve Lampson, doesn't have far to go, is on the final lap. He was hoping he could build a points lead, we heard earlier, and of course, he's starting off just that way. But Damon, we have two motos, it's not just one race. Yeah, that's right, this first moto is definitely a good start for Lammy, but the second moto is also gonna count. Here he comes across the finish line, Steve Lampson comes home, our victor in moto number one. We see Art Ekman run across the track before Damon Huffman finishes second. Of course, he'll be going to Victory Circle, but first, let's take a look at the final results. Lampson, Huffman, Raynard Hughes, and Pichon round out the top five. The second five, of course, Brown, Swink, Yezik, Pingree, and Tim Ferry. Let's go to Art Ekman, who's with our winner. Give your teammate, Doug Henry, a little advice before the 250. Yeah, just kind of tell him uh, some of the good lines because it's kind of hard because he hasn't been out there for a while. So uh, just kind of want to give a few pointers where I thought they'd uh, change a lot in practice. Steve, obviously, with the consistent lap times that you had, uh, you made the good lines. Uh, where did you find that you could pick up the time on the track? Well, I just had to ride smooth the whole way, and I just had, towards the middle part of the race, I started getting some smoother lines, carrying a little more momentum. Uh, my mechanic, Mike, going to tell me all day, you know, i got to stay with the momentum on a 125, so I did it. Phenomenal way to start the season. Thank you very much. I'll do the next moto, hopefully, too. Thanks, Art. In second place is Damon Huffman. It's the first time this year he's lost a race after dominating Supercross competition. And Art Ekman is with him now. Ah, uh, the endurance of motocross is adverse to Supercross, Damon. Great race for you after a wonderful start. Yeah, I got the whole shot. That's the uh, second year in a row here at the first national. But uh, I did a little better, too. I got second. Um, I, I think Lammy was maybe a little more ready than I was, but uh, this is on the first moto of the year, and there's lots more to go. What part of the track now are you going to focus on in the second moto that gave you some problems in this first one? Um, probably the the high speed areas. You know, I think I seem really good in the tight stuff. But it's a hot, wide open hanging on part. I got to hang it out a little more. We'll see how much he hangs it out when we come back for moto number two from Gatorback Cycle Park. cc liquid cooled 16 valve engine with straight intake tracks adjustable suspension and an ultra rigid twin tube diamond type frame best of all it's comfortable on any road the suzuki rf 900 r Welcome back to Gatorback Cycle Park, where we see former 125 national champion Guy Cooper getting ready for his start. Now, there's a guy that's known for wild tricks, Damon. Yeah, that's a nickname, Coop de Loop there. He's like rubber ball, man. He can crash and flip a cartwheel and get back up on the bike, still finish the race. Another guy we'll be looking for here, preparing for the start, is Michael Craig, one of the Honda Troy entries. And to our left is number five and winner of moto number one, Steve Lampson. Let's now go to a Honda riding tip with Ben Sheetwood and Doug Henry. 
I'm Ben Chewin, and joining me for the Honda Riding Tip is two-time national motocross champion Doug Henry. Doug, how important is ride, walking the track before you ride? It's very important, most, most of all uh, safety, you know. If they go out there and change the track, you want to be out there and, and know what you're up against. Also, there's, uh, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to a track. You know, a face of a jump can look even all the way across, but there may be a low spot or a high spot, and you want to stay low on, on all the jumps. So. You, you know, you aim for that low spot every time and try to avoid the high spot. And also, you know, if you get out there and you get a good start, or if you don't get a good start, you're going to need a place to pass. And to go out there and, and find different lines and, you know, be creative, try to go around the rough stuff, because a lot of times the, the, uh, the rough stuff, uh, you know, it, it could be the fastest line, but also going around the stuff will save energy and it could also be even faster. Part of the winning combination is walking the track before you race. For the Honda Riding Tip, I'm Ben Sheetwood with Doug Henry. Thanks, Ben. Well, here at ESPN, Damon, we don't have to walk the track because we can just look down from the helicopter and look below because here comes the start of moto number two. They're away, all 40 riders, and then we'll go back downstairs and see who gets the whole shot. As we watch them come through the first turn, we'll see if any of these riders get tangled. A couple are wide, but at least they're all up on two wheels. Look, Craig Decker, the man they call Triple Decker, has got the whole shot. Looks like Lamson might be in second. Yeah, here we go off that drop off. You go from the top of the gator pit off into the bottom and back up the other side. We're getting some great shots from the helicopter. You can see how they're choosing different lines. The whole shot for the Suzuki. And right now, Lamson is looking. We've got another Suzuki coming through to take second place. Great angle. Oh, and he's down. It's Tim Ferry, the 19-year-old from Palm Harbor, Florida. Looks like he's able to get the bike back up, but he's going to have to start from the back. He won here in Florida in the Orlando Supercross, but it's not going to happen today. Yeah, he's definitely got his work cut out for him. Coming from behind the pack on this track, it being hard and dusty is uh, going to be difficult. You have to say, though, he was going for it. He went for second place, but it didn't work this time. Another great angle from the helicopter. You can see the hard pack sweeper, and we can see now that the Suzuki of Craig Decker is still in the lead with Lampson falling, and then we have another Suzuki coming into the picture now, replacing what used to be Tim. Oh, another Suzuki's having trouble. It seems like whoever goes for second, Damon, is struggling. Yeah, this track, you can really see where there's several lines in some of these corners, which is good. It makes it easier on the riders to pass. And also, you can see how hard, and there are some rocks laying out there. Craig Decker is another one of the 19-year-old stars from the American Suzuki camp. They're going through the elevator right now, and I'd have to say that Lampson, having won moto number one, is kind of content just to follow him and save some energy. Yeah, I think so. I think he's considering saving some energy because he knows this guy didn't finish in the top of the first moto, but yet he doesn't want all those other guys to run up behind him. So maybe best to get him around him and go on. We have a chance now to look back through the field. There's Huffman. He was just behind Brown. Pichon. There's Wyndham. Some of the guys who had great starts before not doing too well. Look at Lamson. He's going for the lead, and he takes it. He moves past Decker, but Decker's not giving up. Decker comes back to the inside. Maybe Lampson is going to go on around and try to run away from these guys and get him a comfortable lead. Now, Craig Decker is a fast 125 rider. He's currently second in the points in Supercross. We'll have to see if he has the endurance to stay with Lamb. Looks like Lamb there just pulled off his tear off, so he's got a clear view ahead of him. I think he's going to try to go ahead and run away. I think these other guys, you can see there, are some of them not the top finishers in the first moment. We said there was a Suzuki in third, and it turns out it's Guy Cooper. Great start for him. We'll have to see if the former 125 national champion will be able to hang on to this podium spot. We have Lampson in front, and we have out on the outside Decker and Cooper. Raynard coming to the inside. Look, it looks like Lampson's in trouble. Lampson has now lost two places. He's down to third, and Craig Decker goes back to the lead. I wonder if Lampson's got, yeah, he's dropped another position as Raynard goes by. I wonder if he's got a problem with his bike. Yeah, lamby has got to be having some sort of trouble. I don't know if he banged his knee or if he, if he is having mechanical trouble. Oh! Look at that one. Craig Decker, our leader, has done a face plant into the side of the bank there. Ooh, I hope he's okay. That was a nasty one. But Guy Cooper now inherits the lead. Boy, it's fast and furious here in moto number two. We see Decker trying to get out of the way, and Brian Deegan T-bones him. Oh, man, things get worse for Decker. Here in the replay, you can see it looks like he got a little sideways actually before he hit this wall. I think there's some rock probably on the face of that. His rear tire just hit it and his weight was forward. Well, looks like he's okay there. I hope he's okay after getting hit by Brian Deegan. But we have a battle for the lead. Here's Robbie Rayner going to the inside on Guy Cooper. That yeah, looks like Cooper's not going to shut off though as normal. He'll, uh, when he sees another rider, he likes to grab a handful. 
Well, Robbie Rayner did it. He got through. He's leading. We talked about him being not totally physically fit, but right now he's where he wants to be. He is in the lead, and hopefully now he can hang on. Yeah, now Rayner needs to set a real good pace and run off from these guys as far as he can, and, uh, and, and just in case the shoulder does give him some trouble. We'll be back in a moment. back to Gatorback Cycle Park. Jan Vikas, Damon Bradshaw, and Art Ekman in the pits. You're looking at our leader, number 22, Robbie Raynard, who finished third in the first moto, now going to see if he can go for the overall. Looking back through the field, we see Swink. Also see we got Mike Brown there, putting on the chase for the front. These guys that are in the front of the pack this time weren't in the first moto, but that's good for Rainer. Rainer's probably thinking about last year here at Gainesville when he did similar to the same thing so far, so we'll wait and see. Well, we got a quick look at David Pingree, then we saw Damon Huffman, and there's Lampson, still struggling. We, we don't know exactly what's wrong with the bike, but we certainly think he's got some kind of mechanical problem, and he's just trying to hang on. Yeah, it looks like he's got a flat tire, Jan. That's something you kind of have to worry about on his hard pack track. Well, you can see it at the front of the bike. There's his mechanic, Mike Gosselaar. It doesn't look like he's sure what the problem is, but we think maybe here from the booth that he's got a flat front tire on that Honda. How long can he ride with a flat tire? I don't know. It depends on what kind of tire they got on. They have some things they can do to where you really can't tell that much if you do have a flat tire and you can keep riding it for a while. Well, we're looking closely. It may not be totally flat, but we see riders moving past him. Well, there he just kind of loses some traction. That had nothing to do with the front. Just looks like he's lost his rhythm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think he really uh, is too sure what's going on. If it is his front tire, he's taking it easy, especially. You can see how he's riding the outside, so it kind of has something to slide up against if the front tire gives out on him. Well, you can certainly see he is taking it very steady there out on the outside, and we may have a chance. We have to check in with Art Ekman. Art Ekman has been looking into this Honda situation to find out what might be wrong with Lampson. Ryan, what goes into the decision whether you pull him off or not? Well, first of all, we got to make sure that, uh, that he does have a flat. We've got difference of opinion, so uh, when he comes by, I'm just going to hold the wheel out, and, and uh, if he pulls in, and it's flat, and it's kind of up to him. It looks as though the Honda team has the same information that we've been able to gather here in the booth. We'll have to see if Steve Lampson, when he sees that tire, if he decides to pull it in. We can see that Kevin Windham is catching him. Who you could see when it was in the air that there's something not right with that front wheel, Damon. Yeah, it looks like I don't even know if it's the tire. It may be a combination of a tire and a broke wheel. You can see Davey Yezik and also Kevin Windham putting a move on him there as we go up to Brian Swink, who runs in second place at the moment, the 22-year-old Honda of Troy rider. Brian Swink now negotiates the sandy part of the track, squares it off, and there's our leader, Robbie Raynard, position number one on the Kawasaki. We'll look back for the interval to find out how far back there he is. Brian Swink, number two, then Guy Cooper in third place. This is the closest battle on the track. Let's see if Lamson decides to pull in. He's had the sign. That's Wyatt Seals who has given him the sign. Let's see if he decides to pull in. We're waiting to find out if we'll have a tire change here. Well, that's Mike Healy. Maybe they thought that they were trying to wave him off the track. <laughs> Not exactly what we were hoping there for Healy. But yes, Lampson has decided to come in. They'll try and change that front wheel. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. If there is something wrong with the wheel, there's no way he can ride the rest of the moto with it. So this is probably a smart thing for uh, him to do is come in and get a wheel and go back out and ride the best he can and get all the points he can. But do you think there's even a chance he could score some points? He's going to drop all the way to the back here. Yeah, yeah, he'll definitely score points. One point's better than none at the end of the year. And how far back do you go to where you will score a point? It will score points back to 20th place, and uh, that's good. I think he can finish, you know, above 20th because it's still young in the moto. Well, there's 40 riders out there, so if they do get this wheel changed, he's going to have to be totally on the gas to try and score points and see if he can salvage anything after winning that first motor. You could see him rip off the goggles there, knowing that there's a lot of points down the drain. But these guys, I'll tell you, they'll get this job done quick. Yeah, they're working as fast as they can, and, you know, you get too much help in there, and then it kind of puts you further behind. Steve, obviously one of the most frustrating situations you could pop possibly experience. Yeah, I can't do nothing about it, but go, go, go. it sucks, I tell you that. When did it happen? Off the big jump here? First lap. Yeah, I, could, I knew it happened, and it's just time before it busted all apart, you know, so. Looks like they're about ready to go. Boy, what quick work by the crew. 
As you could hear, Lampson said that he uh, busted apart, so he was obviously talking about the front wheel. And once the front wheel busts, there's no way he can jump anything or hit any of the holes, so it was smart that they came in. You're looking at Mike Gosseler along with Wyatt Seals, and then up top was Cliff White, who's back with the team after being injured last year in a transporter explosion. Good to see him here. These guys certainly got those repairs done quickly. The final couple of bolts being tightened there, and Steve Lampson is back underway. We'll have to see if he can salvage any points here in moto number two. Going to the front, or I should say midfield, we see Mike Brown now in a battle with Damon Huffman. These two guys have not got the kind of starts that they hoped, and they're hoping that they can move up to the front, which right now, this race is being led by Robbie Raynard. We have Mike Brown going to the inside, and oh, now he slips to the outside. Looks like Huffman's going for the position. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. There's so many different lines back there you can actually run. So uh, as you can see there, he went to the inside and took the advantage. Well, I think that Mike Brown wanted to take the inside line, but he just didn't have the traction, drifted out wide, and then we saw Huffman come through. Here's the field summary brought to you by Honda. We'll be back after this. So when they ice it, ice it, hook it, hook it, save it, save it, stick it, stick it, stop it, stop it, play it, play it and score it, score it, you'll need to know. NHL tonight on ESPN2. ESPN2. News, features, and highlights. Sports Center for the Hockey Attic. Tuesday through Saturday at 11.30 p.m. As the clock winds down, the season heats up on ESPN2. Welcome back to Gainesville, Florida, Gatorback Cycle Park, where we're watching Moto number two. That's Mike Brown right now being chased by Ryan Hughes, who's trying to move through the field. They're side by side coming down into turn number one. It looks like Hughes may have the right line. Yep, he's got the inside line there. That line there is used a lot to pass because uh, most of the guys want to use it outside because it seems faster. Well, that was for sixth place. Ryan Hughes trying to make up for lost time. Didn't get the kind of start that he wanted. Remember, in moto number one, he was strong. He was up front, but then he faded. Looked like he tired. Yeah, I don't know. We'll wait and see this time. I think, I don't know if Brown is that strong uh, this far into the moto or not. I know the first moto was put a beating on him, so we'll see. Uh-oh. That's Craig Decker. He's the man who was leading early, had that huge crash with a face plant into the wall and then hit by another rider. I wonder if that damaged the bike, Damon. Yeah, I'd say there's a good chance of that because it hit him on the right side of the bike. And uh, you know, that's where the pipe turns in and where some radio hoses are. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Guy Cooper taking the inside line, and then it looks like Damon Huffman taking the outside, and he takes the position away from the other Suzuki rider. You're seeing a factory bike there passing a privateer entry. Yeah, Damon needs to get to the front of the pack as soon as he can because his other guys are starting to get away from him. If he's going to be a factor in the second moto, he's going to move. Another guy making a move. You saw in the background is number 101, Mikhail Pichon, the Frenchman who did well in the first moto, also goes by Guy Cooper. He's going to hope that he can latch on to Huffman and go to the front. Yeah, he's obviously riding better this moto. I think that uh, took him a little bit of time in the first moto to get adapted, but uh, it looks like he's riding well. But Mikhail Pichon is going to hope that he can follow all those lines. Well, look at Guy Cooper. He's not giving up so easily. He's going to see if he can stay after the Frenchman and keep up here and keep his chances alive for a podium finish. Pichon right now is in fifth place, Cooper in sixth. We'll go to the front and take a look at the interval. There is our leader, Robbie Raynard, on the Kawasaki. Then you'll see the Honda. That is Steve Lampson, not in contention, but there is second place right now, Brian Swink. We don't know how many laps Lampson's down, but he's trying to score some points. There's third place, Damon Huffman, and right on his heels, Mikhail Pichon. Let's watch Huffman and Pichon go through this first turn. Yeah, these guys here, it looks like Pichon may push Huffman up into uh, Swink and the other riders, and that's what they need to do. Well, we can tell by that locator shot that all these guys still have a chance at winning this race. There's plenty of time to go, and here comes Pichon up the inside, but no, it doesn't look like he had the kind of drive he wanted. Yeah, Huffman's been using that outside line all day. Maybe he just feels like he can carry a little more speed, but uh, Pichon is definitely staying right behind him. This is going to be a great battle. These two guys are very talented. You know, they have a similar style. You said earlier they don't seem to use a lot of energy on the bike, like that guy, Robbie Raynard. Yeah, these guys don't look like they're using a whole lot of energy. You know, there goes Lamps, and that's a good example, but uh, uh, Raynard is, looks like he used it a little bit more, but if he can last for that 30 minutes, hey, if it works, use it. Brian Swink is a rider that must be happy with his position at the moment, but look at there, Pichon goes through for third place. 
Yeah, it looks like he tried that left-hand side there going down that straightaway coming out of the bottom and then uh, but maybe maybe Huffman's just gonna lay back and, and wait till the end. I don't know. Well, this guy's not laying back and waiting for the end, although he does look very smooth right there. You'd never know that that is the leader. He has such a style that looks like he's not even going fast. Robbie Raynard holds down the lead. Yeah, Robbie's in a good position right now. He just needs to kind of race against that imaginary guy in front of him to uh, keep him keep him headed forward. Well, that is a great way to motivate yourself, thinking that there is an imaginary rider there. But this guy, he looks so smooth. He looks like he's working. Does he stand up more than the other guys maybe through that section? Well, he just like I said, he's you know before I said he was using all kinds of energy, but here he's not using any at all. He's been really smooth, and, and that's what he needs to do is to save that energy before the end of the moto because uh, these other guys are riding really hard. Brian Swink, second place, but Mikhail Pichon has closed that gap in the matter of a half of a lap. Pichon right now, probably the fastest bike on this track. Let's check in with Art. Marshall, this is more of what you expected out of Brian Swink in this moto. Yeah, the first moto, we had a little problem with suspension. Uh, we got it straightened away this moto, and hopefully we can catch in on the leader and uh, come out with the win. You got enough time. You got plenty of time. Yeah, there's still about nine laps left, so we just got to focus ahead and look for the win. Brian Swink right now has probably got to be more worried behind him. Mikhail Pichon is putting the pressure on him. He's thinking about catching the leader, but right now, isn't he thinking about protecting second? Yeah, he is. He's thinking about that, but also he's think, trying to think about the racetrack also. You, oh, you can see how slick the track is there and going down. Well, it looks like Brian Swink, who he thought maybe could make a challenge for the lead, has gone down. We call that spinning out in cars, what we would call that on a motocross. Yeah, about the same thing. The back tire basically broke loose and he went around. Brian Swink, we get a chance to look at the replay. What happened, Damon? Hey, this looks like the back end just, yeah, as you can see there, the back end just started washing. There wasn't a whole lot he can do. Just a little bit too much power on a very slick surface. Brian Swink looked like he was headed for the podium, and there we see Mikhail Pichon take him for the position. He's back up and riding. Hopefully he hasn't readjusted those levers when he fell, and he can come home with at least a few points. Yeah, that was smart with Pichon there. He must have had a big wide view on the racetrack, because you can see he didn't even get close to running into him, so that's really good. Brian Swink right now trying to salvage something. We're looking here at another guy trying to salvage something after not a great start, and that's Kevin Windham as he makes his way up the... Oh, man, just flips him right over the front of the bike. Youch! That one had to hurt. Kevin Windham, what happened here? Uh, you can see the front end got... It just it just went down in the rut, and it, I don't think he had a clue what was going to happen. It happened so fast. It looked like the front end just got caught in the rut, and over the bars he went. Looked like a rodeo rider there. Hopefully he is okay. He gets his young started back up and hopefully another guy boy there's been a lot of action in moto number two is this because of fatigue yeah this late in the moto fatigue is starting to play a part fatigue may be playing a part here for damon huffman as ryan hughes just bulldozes his way through into third place and as we now have a chance to look at our honda field summary we're going to be back in a moment for the finish Throw the Suzuki Katana 600 at a few of your favorite curves. You'll like how it feels, how it looks, and how much fun it is to ride. Pretty soon, you'll realize that life will never be the same. The Suzuki Katana. everywhere are feeling the beat of better health and better looks with Nordic Track. And now, you can get a free video and brochure showing you how you can experience the Nordic Track beat at a lower cost than you ever expected. It's easier on your body and easier on your budget. Get the free facts and find out how you can get the world's most complete fitness workout for just $299.95. That's Nordic Track's famous flywheel design and safe quality construction at low monthly payments. See why a Nordic Track is the best machine for your cardiovascular health and for overall fitness. Call the number and get your free video and brochure today. This edition of Power Wheels on ESPN2 has been brought to you by Honda, defending champions and holders of the past seven consecutive Supercross titles. Honda, come ride with us.
We look at Robbie Raynard waving to the crowd on the final lap, leading on his Kawasaki. Flawless performance for him, but a lot of trouble for other riders, Damon. Yeah, that's a good feeling to be knowing you're going around that last lap and you've got the, uh, hopefully got the race won. I think he's probably thinking about last year where he won there at Gainesville in front of those people and uh, he's getting to do it again for him. Well, here he comes. He has a chance to come up to the finish line, acknowledge the crowd. He just rolls it out. He had that big of a lead. Robbie Raynard comes home, not only with that victory, but with the overall victory here today. Mikhail Pichon rolls across in second place as we have now a chance to look at the final results. Raynard Pichon, Hughes, Huffman, and Swink in the top five. Second set of five, Antonez, Cooper, Pingree, Craig, and Mike Brown. Art now has caught up to our winner. Art? Robbie, you kind of feel like the monkey might be off your back winning the first national 125 after so many injuries and so little practice time. It feels really good. Um, I just I went out there and I, I I didn't I didn't get the whole shot or anything but it, everything went my way everybody was just kind of falling out of the way out of, for me and something happened to Lampson's bike or I pro, he probably would have won because he's a lot stronger than me right now and I just got to get back up to where I was and I just I'm, I feel happy <laughs> a lot happier. well relaxation was the key with such a big lead not to blow it yeah I just I went I got out front and just tried to ride smooth and if they if I lost some time I tried to pick it back up to the way I was a flawless ride for Robbie Raynard as we look at the overall results. Raynard, Huffman, Bichon, Hughes, and Swink in the top five. Brown, Pingree, and there's Steve Lampson salvaged an eighth after having that problem. Art? Mikhail, it was thrilling for you, I know, to see so many passes and to get into second place. Yeah, I got a bit start, and I was very tired after the, the first moto. And uh, I'm so happy because it's my first outdoor. And uh, I don't like this track. It's not a good track for me. I don't feel very good physically. I was very tired. The first moto it was too hard for me, but uh, I'm very happy for me and for my team. It's unbelievable. Well, it's quite an accomplishment since you've been improving so much in Supercross to make this transition to this kind of a track. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big difference between Supercross and uh, outdoor. And uh, I had no ride in, um, in motocross since last year when I broke my wrist. So for me, it's the first race in outdoor since six months. And uh, I'm very happy for that. It's, it's wonderful. Mikhail Pichon comes in third place in the overall standings. Of course, these standings the same as the overall victory here, seeing as there was only one round. Yeah, I think Robbie Raynard, Steve Lampson, and Pichon rode really good. It seems like those guys are real consistent all day. But uh, again, you know, Steve Lampson had the trouble with the wheel braking, and uh, as in the 250 class, those guys had some problems too. But uh, all about it sets the precedence for the uh, 125 National Series. For Jan Bikas, Damon Bradshaw, and Art Ekman, so long, everybody.